<laughs> what did I tell you about not trusting me around holes? <laughs> Hi guys, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet link below if you need some mobile unlimited internet, which I forgot. I did forget a few things on this quick little trip. I had to get away from base camp. It is just this crazy place that never stops raining and anywhere else I go, it, there's just no rain. So I am at a campground that I've never been to before. I love it. It's nestled in the trees, electric only. There's water and a dump on the way out, 20 bucks a night. Brought Roxy the Rebel along with Vanna White the camper van and uh, the two kitties are inside chilling. So um, this is our digs. I'm a little surprised that this place has so many open sites today on a, a beautiful sunny day. There's two or three other campers over there. And uh, yeah, see that water? Well, none of these sites are really on the water, but my site is the closest to the water. Hear those cicadas? Yeah, this is probably the best spot to uh, camp for the day here at the back end of the loop. It's really the only camping area that I can find that really has this view of this monster lake out here, which I don't know what it's called. But I'm, I'm a believer. This is my day to uh, reset and not think about a whole lot of things, but I do have uh, two things I wanna share with you in this video. Uh, however, I'm just kind of <laughs> laughing hysterically at everything else and uh, enjoying nature. It looks like a little trail we can get closer to the water there. Let's see if we can do this without falling and breaking my butt. It is a little steep right there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Now we're just four feet from the water. Wow. This is a neat campground. It's too bad they won't, you know, allow us to camp right on the water's edge. I miss that about back home in Washington State, like the Liar River and places like that. But So uh, for about four months now on the channel, every time I bring up uh, camshafts and my repair efforts on Miranda, my big Class A that's parked at base camp, I always get a bunch of feedback a lot of weird feedback, but oftentimes it's just people trying to help me out and they'll give me links, you know, like I've been trying to get camshafts for four months. Like I said, I have, it's been a crazy ordeal. And then I get someone who just goes into Google, types it in and says, Eric, I found 20 million of them. What are you talking about? Right. Oh, okay. Um, um, I had tons of people say, Eric, you ever try Parts Geek? They say they have 142 in stock. Uh, actually, that was my sixth order that I hinted about at my last video from Parts Geek. Uh, they actually had 44 of those camshafts in stock, and when I ordered and paid for two of them, uh, their inventory changed to 42. And that's why I was like really excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, they are finally doing it. Uh, less than a day later, I got an email from Parts Geek and said, your order has been sent to the warehouse. We will ship you the tracking info. I'm like, holy cow, it's finally over. I'm going to get them. And then this morning, I got this message from Parts Geek. Eric Jacobs, no inventory at warehouse. Estimated wait time for camshaft three to six months plus shipping back ordered at manufacturing level. Advised customers. This is not really the sixth order of camshafts that's been replaced. This is the seventh. What I forgot to tell you is that I drove from Michigan five and a half hours back down south to Detroit at the Ford Manufacturing Plant in Detroit. Talked to Jim over the phone and I said, do you have them in your hand? He says, I have them in my hand, two of them. Drive on down. I will be there in five and a half hours. So I get there and I asked for Jim, who I talked to on the phone, and the guy I talked to, who was Jim, but he didn't want me to know, he walks away from me, goes behind another glass mirror door, talks to two other employees, then Jim walks even farther away, the other two employees come to the counter instead. So Jim is distancing himself from me at this point because he knows, he doesn't want to tell me the bad news. Uh, the two employees said, we really, really apologize, we didn't have your number to call you back once you started that five and a half hour trek, but we don't have them, nobody has them. I want you to know that actually, that we spent hours on your trip down here trying to locate one camshaft anywhere on the globe and Ford said they do not exist they are waiting to be manufactured nothing is available on the planet earth for camshafts unless someone has one hidden in their storage somewhere and they don't know about it 
Of course, I was very angry at this point because they just cost me 11 hours of driving in Michigan. And I said, he said he had it in his hand. And the guy's telling me, no, 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 Jim said that he had it on hand. And I said, no, I, I talked to Jim. I know what Jim said. He said he had it in his hand and he was holding it for me. No, that's not what he said. So again, that's when I drove back up. The very next day after that happened is the day I went and looked at Vanna White, the camper van. And I decided that um, it's gotten to the point now where you have a used vehicle, you can no longer repair it in today's day and age. You can buy a brand new vehicle, a brand new RV, but we can't even, no matter what, I can't get a camshaft, guys, and I'm, I'm delirious here. I really, really am. I have gone every route possible and they don't exist, so. So, what do we do? Uh, Parts Geek didn't refund my order. I think they're gonna try again to ship to base camp in another three to six months, as they say. Um, I really don't know. Um, most of the other companies have all refunded all my orders, so moving forward, you know, OEM camshafts, aftermarket camshafts, uh, starting to go into the idea of going to junkyards and just maybe taking a buddy with me and start tearing into a few of these engines and see if I can get a used one. See if I can get a company to make me one. I, um, there's one thing I know for sure. Miranda is not going to be on the road for quite some time. I'm not saying I'm giving up on the RV, but the RV is not going to move for quite some time due to this nationwide global camshaft shortage for the F53 chassis. And, and also, just for those of you looking, because a bunch of people are going to say, I found, I found, it's, it's a 2012 Ford F53 chassis V10 gas 6.8 liter. Looking for the passenger side, but I've also would love to have both both sides to do it when we do that job. But I need the passenger side because the lobe is rubbed off. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, I'm not doing much work here today. I'm not doing any van projects or anything like that. Let's check out the uh, Hamilton hiking trail here. Looks like it's gonna rain. <laughs> Like it got dark. I think it's just the tall trees and the sunshine's not peeking through anymore. Well, let's go see where this leads though. Cause I'm also no longer traveling with an e-bike. So, so for exercise, I need to walk. <laughs> oh wow, we're just hugging the water up here on the cliff. This is pretty neat actually. I like this. Hmm. This campground is incredibly peaceful and strangely beautiful. Okay, we're walking out to this peninsula, and it looks like that's it, guys. <laughs> it's just a short half-mile trail that, uh, well, I'm trying to figure out. It looks like it wanted to keep going, but I'm going to be very careful here. Ooh, see that? That moved. Be very careful here. Yeah, that is the end of the trail. <laughs> it's a cliff on into the water there. So, hmm. Hold on to this tree and go to the edge like I always do. Some, some pretty views though. Not bad. All right, let's head on back. Because there's something else we got to do while we're here at the campground. Not work related, but I'll show you. I'm going to shower in a public shower at a campground. Because I have to try it. You know, okay, so I got a change of clothes, towels, my soap, uh, I've got my shower shoes, and uh, we're gonna go check this out and see what the uh, public shower looks like at this campground. This campground holds, uh, I think, like 40, 42, 40, 45 campsites, and you know, most people don't use the public facilities. It's just, they're just, they just creep me out a lot. Now, there is in my intro, you know, you, you saw that little porta potty right there. It's right across from where I'm staying, but at the front main entrance, there's supposed to be a cleaner shower bathroom area. Yeah. There's the uh, dump station and fresh water on the way out where that trailer's at over there. And this is the main bathroom and shower area. It's actually not bad. It's pretty clean, nice porcelain toilets and urinals. And over here are the three shower bays. Oh gosh. Oh, they have a little rack for your soap there. Um, pretty, pretty basic, but not horrible. It's just push button. There's no temperature control or anything. 
you just tap that button and then whatever water they choose comes out of there. Um, <laughs> nothing fancy, but you know, it, 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 it is unlimited water. It might not be unlimited hot water, but it is an unlimited time and there's no extra cost. And it's not like some of those that charge you extra quarters. Your $20 a night uh, stay here includes hot showers. So I'm gonna give it a whirl here and I'll uh, give you my review after I get done. Oh, you guys want to come in with me? Come on. Come on. Come on in. Join the party. Me personally, and I, I know I'm the minority here because I've, I've talked to so many people who travel in RVs and, and go to campgrounds. Like, I just do not like public showers or public restrooms. Not when you live in and travel with a mobile toilet and shower, although that one's not comfortable. Here's, here's my point. Moving forward, next time I do something like this, I'm gonna pick up one of those $60, $70 pop-up instant shower tents. Uh-huh. And when I get to a campground like this, even though this isn't full hookups, but let's say there is full hookups, and I'll still do it here because you can get water and dump on the way out, I will deploy my outdoor shower right here, not at a Walmart parking lot, shut up, Sean. And then I will use my outdoor shower right here with my onboard hot water heater right here and my tank and my water pump. Uh, in those places where it's allowed, and I would rather take a comfortable hot shower in my own privacy. Uh, I guess I could take it in here. It's just, like I said, it's not, right now, it's not comfortable to stand up in there. It's a sit-down shower in there, but that's how I feel about pub public showers. Um, I'm against it, basically. <laughs> okay, so I didn't bring everything I wanted to bring, but I did make one change on the side of this part of the side door is where the table and pedestal used to be where you could or could have uh, put that right there in that hole and then a table here. Uh, you could sit there and have a table. However, you wouldn't ever be able to get to the back of the RV with that table there. So what I did is it was right here. As you can see, I've got my Fort Wilderness Mickey folding chair in that space. I've got my tri-levelers right here. So it sits on there and to keep it from vibrating, I use some of the old foam that was there with the table so that when you shut this door, it pushes against the foam. Therefore you don't, why do I hear rattling? Oh, those are rattling. Okay, well, I might have to work on those because <laughs> that's what I was hearing. I was wondering about that. I knew the chair doesn't rattle, but easy enough to just grab the camping chair right now and uh, bring it outside. Jax, you gotta stay. Where's your... There's your sister. She's up there being a goober. Yeah, you're being a goober too. Wait, I'll be back. You just chill for a second. Yes, I could have gotten a smaller chair that fits in the van. In fact, I do have that other green fold up one that you guys saw in a previous video, but there's some sacrifices to me that just are not worth it. So this is an incredibly comfy chair for me. It has the table for my laptop, my drink holder. It's got all these side pockets on the side. It's lightweight because it's aluminum. You know, for me, it was worth finding a way to uh, travel with this, so, yeah. This is a nice, peaceful, relaxing campground here. Even when it's full, there's certain sites that are definitely farther away from ev everybody, you know, so. I was going to say I was going to watch some Netflix with those kitties, but since I didn't bring Nomad Internet, I do have my hotspot on my Verizon phone. I could change the fire stick over to the hotspot on the phone and watch some TV, but I only have one intermittent bar here. In fact, I got a phone call from Sean and it didn't even ring. It just went straight to voicemail because there's not a whole lot of service out here in the woods. No. And somebody left this wood that wants to get burned. I didn't even bring the torch. My torch flame thing that lights fires. It's actually not in Miranda. It's uh, on the back porch, a base camp. So. I did get a uh, text message from RV Prepper Wayne. He wants me to click on a link that's not opening right now because I don't have good enough service. But he said, Eric, order this camshaft. I'm like, okay. It's on eBay. It said he had two of them. He sold 50% of those two. And it says there's one left. I may grab my phone and try to go out by the road and see if I can get better service out there. Like I said, I'm not giving up, guys. Look, I'm not giving up. I'm frustrated. <laughs> uh, it's, it's getting to the point where it's just kind of comical. Uh, but I don't, I don't have a whole lot of 
I don't have a whole lot of worries right now. I've got a got a great little camper van RV that I'd take anywhere in the country right now in a heartbeat. However, nobody ever really wants to just give up. You know, you want to just keep hope that, and faith that something's going to change. Somebody on eBay just was going through their garage and found two camshafts and listed them. And he's already sold one of them and I need the other one, right? So I'm ready to leave Illinois. I'm ready to leave base camp. Got to winterize a few things, including Miranda. Yes, yeah, she needs to be winterized because I'm not going to be back by the time it starts to get cold. Won't be back till next year. So I don't think. I mean, who knows? Man, things could change. Who knows? We could get this camshaft installed and I end up taking the class A uh, to, to the desert this winter or wherever I'm going. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm ready. Um, I know a lot of my viewers are growing tired of me going to base camp. I've tried to keep it interesting. I've lost a ton of subscribers and uh, boy, boy, I don't really care. I'd rather have 12 awesome supportive subscribers than 200 some thousand people who are just want me to entertain and jump around like a monkey for everything they want to see me do in my life. No, man, life's, life's too short, guys. You better live the life that you want to live. Quit, quit listening to what everybody else wants. That, that's the key to happiness. Do what you want to do. It's worth it. All right, just hanging out here in Vanna White, the camper van. And Jax is over here on the bed sleeping. And Tara, I don't want to wake her up. Look, look at this goop. Oh, I didn't mean to wake you up. I just want to show how precious you are on the driver's seat, all tucked away. <laughs> all right, go back to sleep, cutie. All right, I'll wake you up when it's dinner time, okay? When Jax is hungry later, because he's not hungry right now. He's not hungry, doesn't need any treats. Oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, just uh, chilling in here. It's definitely gotten dark outside, watching some Simpsons on Disney Plus. I uh, hooked up my hotspot for my Verizon after all, and uh, I was happy to see that it is working. So we kind of lucked out, right, Jax? Yeah, now we get to cuddle. Man, where's treats though? Well, I'll work on that. Anyways, really happy to have found and discovered this little campground. Um, gonna gonna pack it in for the night, guys. So. No idea what is going to happen in my next video, where we're going, or what project we're going to be working on. Uh, haven't heard back from the eBay order yet, but I don't know. For some reason, the seventh time feels like the charm. I no. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Give me a thumbs up. I appreciate if you subscribe and always leave a comment and just say hi. It really helps me out. Good to hear from you guys. I'll see you in the next one in two days. Bye, guys.